Hey, good morning. It is day 49 on the Appalachian Trail and I'm standing in front of the Selenese, Selenese plant, um, which from my understanding makes cigarette butts. And even though my snout is not doing too well with my cold, I think I kind of smell cigarette butts, but I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, I'm back on trail. Just walked across a, a big bridge uh, and now finally uh, leaving town. Uh, it's gonna be slow going. We'll see how far I can get today. Um, somebody had asked me about trekking poles and whether I was using them or not because they never saw me using them in my videos. Um, yes, I do use them, but when I'm making videos, I need one hand for the, for the um, selfie stick or the phone. So I don't generally, I, put, I just carry them while I'm talking. Uh, sometimes I'll actually put them in my pack. Uh, like I'll just shrink them down and then put them in my pack if I'm going to be talking for a long time. Just makes things easier. But yes, I do use trekking poles. Um, oftentimes when I'm walking on flats, uh, like just flat um, surfaces or gentle grades, I don't, I just kind of carry them. Um, but when I'm going up hills, I'll, I'll use them. I'm going down steep stuff, I'll use them. Uh, it helps kind of pick your way down through rocky sections as well. So that was a good question. Uh, I am using trekking poles. Um, today I still have my jacket on. I woke up and it was very chilly. Um, and just with this cold, I can, I don't know, I'm just barely going up this grade and I'm getting out of breath. But, oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted and um, see how far I can get today. In the rough and rugged climate, we have wildflowers. And they're starting to blossom, and it's really nice seeing them along the trail as I continue up this never-ending hike, this uphill. Ah, so I enjoyed that. Hope you did too. So somebody had asked me how I filter my water because I'm always talking about filtering water and getting water. So this is a bee free uh, from a company called Katadyne or Katadin. I think Katadyne is the right one. But it has uh, two parts. It has the bladder. This is a one liter bladder and then it has a filter. So what I do, it's as simple as this. This is called a pipe spring. So the water is being piped out of the, the mountain. So it's actually fairly clean already, but taking no chances. Um, so I put the, the bladder under the, under the flow of water and I just wait. And that will fill up fairly quickly. Um, So it's got about half full. So then I put the top back on with my right hand. My left hand is contaminated water. So I just usually get the bladder there and wipe it on myself so I don't drink it. Uh, I hold it with my left. Again, right hand being the clean hand. And then I have, I open my other water bottle I take my cap, put it in my pocket, 
usually standing up, so it's a little bit easier. Um, then I flip this over, and then I just squeeze, and I get a nice steady flow of water. Uh, this bottle was already half full, but it's uh, it's going pretty quickly. And then I will stop squeezing and then flip it over, put it under my arm, put my cap back on, all right-handed, flip the top, and there you have it. So the left hand is the kind of the working hand for me. Um, that way I kind of minimize the uh, contamination that I might end up getting uh, when I'm getting my water. So that's about it. Uh, and then at times, depending on where the source is, I might just uh, flip it up and, and drink from this, but I'm careful again not to get any of the contaminated water flowing up over the top. Um, because that can, that can cause problems. Um, I'll fill my, I'll drink a bunch of this water, um, fill up my bottles, and then I'll uh, be on my way. That's about it. So I'll check in in a bit. And no wildflowers. So I came up from that way. And here's the shelter. And it looks like it's been, it was a fire. Probably fairly recently. But then, Poles. I'm gonna head this way. So I guess the um, seven miles of elevation paid off because this is this is pretty awesome. The birds are chirping, and I was able to just rest for about 15 minutes. to that other hill. But we got this nice view here. Don't know what town that is or if it's really even a town or a suburb. But oh, it's really pretty. I almost think also that those mountains off in the distance are actually in West Virginia because I know we are fairly close yet we don't really touch it all that often if maybe only a couple times so I'll be quiet I'm gonna just walk for a minute give you a nice view of things continue this way for, well, several hours, see where it takes me, see how far I can get with this lingering cold, <coughs> and we'll see, check back. So, 
Well, it looks like we are finishing a half marathon or a marathon. Uh, that's not the case. These barriers are up here because they are doing construction. I'm guessing off to either that side, which I, I hear stuff over there. Uh, I don't, that looks more cliffy. So, but yeah, it reminds me of my race days where you'd run through the chute to finish the race, but that's not the case with this. It's just uh, trying to keep people safe, keep us from wandering where we don't belong, especially, you know, us through hikers who just try to follow the, the white dots or the white blazes. Uh, but this is interesting. There is a giant yurt over here on the right. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with the construction. I don't know. I won't be nosy. But I'm going to go this way. Follow the white blazes. So, um, I almost forgot about you guys. <laughs> I made it to a campsite about 16 miles uh, from the start. Uh, four shy of where I wanted to go to, but my legs and feet were not very happy. So, um, I'm in my tent, resting, took my NyQuil, took my medicine, and calling it a night. So, I'll chat tomorrow.